I'll make this. Yeah, you bigger. showed me your Jeff doll the last time you were up here, and it was really nice. I got this very one. unusual piece. <laughs> is is that a bank? Yeah. See He's probably got a slot on top of his head. Oh, now the focus is better. Very good. I'm a I'm a one man production team, so. <laughs> So bear with me. He's got his pipe rammed right into his cheek. <laughs> With a pie cut eye, no less. Isn't that kind of awesome? Very good. I've never saw that one before. Here, I'll, I'll uh, go full there. His face is really well done. But there's that. Very good. Let's see if you can see this. Wow, look at that tiny little pin. Oh, that's a, is it a Jeff pin? A Jeff ring. A Jeff ring, I see. You see that? Is that in focus? Is it made of silver? Yes, it's in focus. Yeah. Is it made of silver? Not sure. Maybe pewter. Isn't that cool? I, I like it. You even got the cigar there. Yeah, I should. There is a, a mutt uh, one. Uh huh. So I'll try to get that next time. But uh, well, hold that's on. a I'm good gonna, job. I'm gonna get some stuff since I got you. Hold on. We're kind of. I want to do kind of like a little mutton Jeff. Show and oh, tell. I see, I see a bimbo toy down there too. Oh, look at that! Let's see if I can fix the life is just one damn thing after another. Have you ever seen this, the the uh, site called Strippers Guide? No. The the guy that runs Strippers Guide puts these uh, uh, postcards just like this one. Up, I think every Sunday he puts a new one up, and I think he's had this one because I recognize it. But that's the first time I saw what the opposite side looked like. This actually has a photo of the, I guess, the couple. Yeah, maybe they maybe they customized that. I guess they pasted that on there. Anyway, that's great. I, I love those cards. So do I. Oh, that's a nice one. I haven't seen that one. I did, but I need the money. <laughs> this totally like fits in with today's <laughs> world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, that's a nice card. Quit your kicking. Yeah, that's a, got a really nice style to it. Nice painterly style. See, my my favorite is around here somewhere. Okay. Oh yeah, I know where it is. Hold on. I scanned it. Hold on. It's in the printer. I think this is the best one. Ooh. But I feel satisfied with life. <laughs> Some class. <laughs> That's funny. I like the car. It's a neat old postcards. That's a whole field in itself, you know, postcard collecting. I've been to a few postcard uh, conventions. Sheet, sheet music, too. Isn't this what you collect as well? Oh, just uh, to a minor extent. That's a great one, though, Mauricio. Oh, it's a whole songbook. Oh, that's probably from the stage play. Yeah. The musical comedy, it says. I got that's the, nice. I got the bug for Mutton Say, Jeff. Say, if you ever find the, uh, the scrappy theme song uh, sheet music, let me know. That's a looking? very rare one. You're looking for that one? Well, I'd just like to see what the lyrics were. Uh, oh, the that's crazy first. cat, uh, the crazy cat's uh, sheet music I've seen. My my friend uh, Mike Ladd used to have that. 
but uh, I've never seen the scrappy one. Oh, look at that. Oh, boy. Now, that's probably from the same play because it says Gus Hill on it, right? Mutt and Jeff on their honeymoon. Musical cartoon comedy success. That is terrific. I've never seen that. Yeah, I, yeah, I like sheet music a lot. It's a lot like a miniature poster, you know. And the graphic on, on this is just amazing. Oh, they're beautiful. Do you know if Bud Fisher was the one who did all the graphic work, or were there different He artists? wouldn't have done that one, no. He did very little of that. I mean, he, he even, if, if you've read his bio, he didn't do too much on the strip after... Oh, 1920, 1919, 1920 or so. Very nice. Mutt and Jeff in Mexico. Yeah, Al Smith uh, did most of the work for him, his, his ghost, Al Smith. Charles K. Harris. Now, there's, there's a guy who was in partnership with uh, George M. Cohan. If you've ever seen the old Jimmy Cagney, movie about George M. Cohan. They have Charles K. Harris in there, too. I got so lucky with the following. I got these for $3. $3? Yep. That's very good for those old... That's a Couples and Leon book. Yeah, those are really nice. Nicely printed, too. It's hard to find them in really good shape. That looks like it's in, in good shape. Are you going in for the Mutt and Jeff comic books, too? Um, you know, the, the, the DC ones? That's I started nice. to a little bit, but they're kind of, they're a bit tame, you know? Tame? Compared well, to the... Well, they're full color. Yeah. I mean, in terms of the humor. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, they're the later strips, you know. I'm really digging the... Uh... You like the earlier ones. Oh, yeah. There was one where um, they're trying to get out of paying uh, the landlord, you know, rent... So Mutt's telling Jeff, just <laughs> pretend you committed suicide, you know, just hang yourself. <laughs> and the landlord still comes in, sees uh, Jeff hanging by his neck, and she still gets the money out of his pocket, which is <laughs> just so, you know, so That's dark and funny. What we call the hard-hearted humor. <laughs> so funny. But um, I'm going to, I'll get started on, on the cartoons. Let me. Oh, okay, uh, great. Well, that sure is some nice uh, Mutt and Jeff items you have there. Just some Very stuff good. I wanted to, to show you. This is you. from my print. That's from yours. Yeah. Now, that print was duped from the Museum of Modern Arts print. Okay. They used to ha they used to circulate this one. You could you could borrow 16 millimeter prints from the Museum of Modern Art years ago. So I, I I don't remember if I duped this one or somebody else did. But anyway, it came from I know it came from their print. This one right here. Um, yeah, that's the one that you gave me. I loan I loaned this one to you. Yeah. And bombs and bums. But we're going to start with this. Just be, Now, that just one to... came from the uh, Library of Congress. Correct. And I, actually, they also gave me the Big Swim, but they gave me a, a 35. Ah. Well, that probably so, looks nicer. So let's check mm -hmm. out. Depending on the splices, of course. Yeah. This is, uh, is this the one where they go to Russia? That's right. So yeah. there's in... Uh, the Eye Museum also has this one, but it's named something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something up north or something. But you have a shortened have an version of this. From it. Yeah, the shortened version. Yeah. Yeah. When they're being chased by the wolves. Poison Ivan. Yeah, you can see how fragile the perfs are on this one because they're, they're starting to tear on the left side of the picture there. <laughs> yeah, I asked um, Steve Stanchfield if, you know, if he scanned these before. I know uh -huh. he did. He scanned um, 
<laughs> the fire cartoon. I forget what it's called. Yes. I know that one. I know he scanned that one, but, you know, I was just like, you know what? Let me just get everything. Give me everything you have just in case. So this is pretty much everything from the Library of Congress. Wow. Um, and who knows if it will. Uh, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but, you know, who knows if they didn't get these scanned. Uh, some of these I did notice, you know, kind of skip through them. Some were still, you know, have the deterioration on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know. But man, you're going to see right now, hopefully, because like I said, I have to convert the big files over to smaller files so we can watch them. But man, the, just the detail is so awesome. And they're, all of their prints are 35 millimeter, the Library of Congress? Exactly, yeah. Very good. And is this a uh, humor uh, yes. cartoon? Okay. This would be one of the ones he either worked on or, or did the direction on. This is from the 19, what, 1925, 1925-26 series. Most of the Mutt and Jeffs that are around, I think that's that's one of Dick's drawings right there. Most of the ones that are around are from those, from those years. <laughs> I think this, yeah, this is the excerpt I have. <laughs> Ooh. These remind me of our coyotes. We've got a whole tribe of them living in the hillside right across from us. Wow. There's... So around this time, what what was out there? What was out in, in cinema? What was this competing with? Was this around with Coco the Clown and, and Felix? Sure. Yeah, they were all being made at the same time. Dick Humor was trying to earn more money. That's why he left Fleischer, because Fleischer didn't pay too well. So uh, he was trying to go into business with himself. Associated Animators, you know, it was his company that made these. Yeah, I guess by 26, the Mutt and Jeff uh, license still meant something, because they had always had to buy the license to make them from Bud Fisher. Yeah, this is starting to, oh, I see. That's a printing, it's a printing thing. Yeah, it's not shrinking so much, it's just a printing thing. <laughs> I'll show you. The, the intertitles look real nice. It just looks like there's a little bit of hypo in this. That's, what, that's what's creating the lightness in the image here, here and there. It's what they call hypo. Wow. It's a nice cycle. If if you could see the you know the actual raw file I have, the detail on this stuff is amazing. I had to convert this to like 720 just so we could take uh -huh. a look at it. But I, I'll send you some screenshots. They're, they're really they awesome. They sent you a raw scan that was really large. Yeah, they sent me the 4K scan. Wow. Yeah, you have to have the right equipment to play that, but. Yeah, 4K is really wonderful. <laughs> That's a surprise ending. <laughs> that got a little short towards the end. That's very good, though. All right, let's see what the next one is. Very good. Okay, I believe this one is Mutt and Jeff Go Fishing. Ah. Now, this is not a Dick Humor one. I think this is earlier. Not sure of the date on this one. <laughs> Threw Cicero in the drink. <laughs> I wonder what that was. 
That was a wild take that that little Jeff did there. Oh, now it, it repeats. That's interesting. I rewind it so you could take a look at it again. Oh, I see. I thought it repeated on the print. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Just so you could take oh, look a look. At, look at that. <laughs> Fish ate part of his trousers out there. Wow. Now, have you seen most of them or not this one no there's a lot of the early ones i've never seen i've seen just about all the ones the uh, the dick humor era ones but uh this one no were they ever played on television was this a part of the, any of those tv packages or uh i'm sure they showed up here and there uh, not in st louis though where i grew up i we never saw Mutt and jeff there but it helped that a lot of the mutt and jeff cartoons were public domain so yeah they got played at tv stations here and there but they weren't regularly syndicated you know like the aesop fables or the the cocos or anything like that that's nice. I love the inking there. That's really good special effects inking. <laughs> wow, that thing must be a piranha. <laughs> That's good drawing on the little girl. Yeah, this looks all like uh, inking on paper to me. Ooh, it, <laughs> it, this doesn't look like cells. Snop, snop. Ah! Now that's unusual. A white skunk with a with a black stripe. <laughs> Good take. Skunk. Yeah, you can see some of the, the nitrate deterioration coming in there. Outside of uh, Dick Humor, was there anybody else who, you know, famous animator or somebody who worked on the Mutton Jeffs? Yeah, well, Bill Nolan, for one. I think he did a, he did a few. Uh, gosh, I think even Doc Crandall who worked for the Fleischers primarily did some work on Mutt and Jeff. Uh, who else was it? Not George. God, I can't, I can't remember the names as well as I used to, but uh, George Stallings, that's it. George Stallings. Yeah. He did a lot of the Mutt and Jeffs. It's a pioneer animator. He might've drawn that girl for all I know. Watch Jeff Fish. <laughs> now there he's painted on cells. This rose painted on cells just for that one scene. Oh, I see. You, you reversed it. Yeah. See how he's opaqued with the gray paint there? Yeah. <laughs> I love that kind of stuff, you know, where the they they do things with the dialogue balloons. They turn into a little black ball and knock the knock somebody over. They do all kinds of creative things with those. There again, it's done on cell or 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 at least cut out. Might be cut out paper too.
they had to pay money to uh, Bray and Heard in in the twenties every time they used the cell system because Bray and Heard had a patent on it, you know. So, when did <laughs> that end? Was it the Bray Heard patents? The... I think not until the mid thirties. Like if you see the early uh, harmonizing Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies, they have a copyright or a, a patent line for Bray Heard on those. Like it says license under Bray Heard patents. That means the cell system. Yeah. <laughs> I love the rolling pin and the hammer. Uh oh. <laughs> That's the game warden. There again, the the uh, you know the dialogue balloon turns into a little black ball and hits Jeff in the head. That's nice. They put their own modern leader on there. That almost looked like Thunderbird Films, didn't it? That leader. This was spelling out something. The circus. Wow, 1917. It's a real early one. It's wonderful that some of these still exist. Look at the line work. It's just so awesome. Yeah. Well, everything's inked on paper there. <laughs> yeah, I think both George Stallings and Vernon Stallings, I think Vernon was his brother, uh, worked on some of these. What else also is cool that came in the... Uh... The hard drive is they also sent Globetrotters, but the original black and white version. Yes. And it's got the uh, original inner titles. I think it's got a couple of, like original scenes that weren't Very in the color good. version. So now we have both the color and the original version of that one. Right. Well, uh, yeah, the, the original is always going to be better as far as the animation goes. Yeah. Because in the color version, they not only retraced them all, but they re-exposed them so that they, you know, the action was slower. Putting in again. <laughs> you see that that cord in front is an overlay, so they can pass behind it. They don't have to register to it. Oh, that's a nice drawing of the of the uh, rhino. Or is that a hippopotamus? I think that's a hippopotamus. And there's animated. Uh, plans a job as a mitt artist. I think we know what that is. Oh, I see it's a boxing kangaroo. Oh, there goes the nitrate. They used to turn these out, I think, one a, one a week sometimes, one every two weeks. They really had to turn them out fast. Sort of like the Hanna Barbera of, of 1917, whatever this one was made. Wow, that's really got getting a lot of deterioration. It's too bad. This might have been one of the ones they rescued from Dawson City. You know, did you see the documentary about that, Mauricio? That was so great. Where can I find that? Where it's, I think it's online. It's it's in Dawson City, which was in uh, in Canada, you know, and that was the last stop on the old uh, circuit, you know, where they would uh, ship nitrate prints. And uh, the city of Dawson just uh, buried them all in a swimming pool. And many many years later, they dug up what had been the swimming pool and found all these old nitrate prints. And they found a lot of things which they thought were gone forever. 
I don't think they found many cartoons, though. But it, nevertheless, it's a very interesting story. Is it called Frozen Time? That's the one. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting documentary. Yeah, these are <laughs> Nick's on the gun. This is Mutt. I'm the lion. Whoa. Yeah, that's pretty typical of nitrate decomposition. I've had a few of them go on me like that. I have them under control. <laughs> Now it's getting a little better. <laughs> that was one of the hard scenes to do with all the crowds, all the characters. Wow. I think it's going, it's fading out. Wow, that was really fun, though, to see something that early on Mutt and Jeff. They just never turn up like that. Library of Congress. I, I just saw their their uh, their lettering there. Skating instructor. Okay, this is one of the uh, Dick Humor ones again. And a tinted print. Yeah, there's a couple in in the uh, hard drive that that have tint on it. It's yes, cool. tinted and toned. Yeah, a lot of silent movies were issued like this, with the stock tinted. When you see the early Mutt and Jeffs, you, you realize how much more refined in animation these were. They, they did a lot more movement. They made progress. Yeah, I, there's a lot of excerpts from this one that were in the uh, home movie market. But I, I have not seen this one before. <laughs> I don't know if, if Dick ever he might have been interviewed about these Mutt and Jeffs uh, I think maybe by Mike Barrier, and he might have said in those interviews who some of the animators were uh, at uh, his studio there, Associated Animators. Yeah, the only <laughs> other recent release I know of is the Ray Pointer one. Of Mutt and Jeff? A, yeah, and there's an interview with his son. Oh yeah, about these, but um, yeah, there's not much really, you know, in depth, you know. Well, Mike Barrier did some good interviews with Dick, and uh, also Dick wrote a lot of articles for um, a magazine called Cartoonist Profiles, in which he talked about his history. I think Cartoonist Profiles is online. That was a great magazine. It's no longer being published, but it was really good. Good magazine on cartooning. <laughs> well, this is a very nice print. <laughs> you know, on, on these, I don't see any animation that looks exactly like Dick's, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of his drawing in them. Yeah, I think he did a lot of layout. Like that, like that drawing, 
a mutt where he's in, in, enlarging. It looks like one of Dick's drawings. Well, I really like this one. This is nice. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about these. I'm I'm pleasantly surprised that they're actually really funny. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, man, we gotta save these because nobody's really doing anything with them. And funny enough, there is someone who still owns, uh, I believe, the trademark or, or something on the characters. Because when Bud Fisher died, the rights went to his, I guess, wife. And then she had children, so they still own it. The, the de yes, uh, uh, Dita S. de Beaumont. Yeah. Uh, I think was actually not his wife. It just, she was his mistress. <laughs> but, oh, wow. Uh, but he gave her the rights, not because he wanted to be generous, but because I think he got some kind of tax advantage <laughs> wow. by giving her the rights. So, yeah, and, and her heirs still have some interest in the Mutt and Jeff trademark. But I don't think, you know, public domain is public domain. I don't think they actually own the films or even the comic strips anymore. Just the trademark, Mutt and Jeff. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> the plans are to hopefully, you know, release you know at least the best of the, the best versions of this stuff because yeah they're so funny very good <laughs> snowman is ruined <laughs> Their modern leader on everything. Laughing gas. Oh, I couldn't read the the, uh, the year on that. Whoop! Can you put it put it on still on the title? Nineteen seventeen again. Bud Fisher Film Corporation. Oh my gosh! Yeah, these are really really rare. That's wonderful. They have and some check, of these. Check this out. One thing I noticed on, on these, uh -huh. they're cutouts. These bubbles are cutouts. Yeah. You can, cut, you can kind of see a shadow. Underneath. Right. Yeah, they're just applied to the, to the uh, upper level. Yeah, there's another example of either. Oh, God, look at that wonderful animation on the background. Isn't that great? What is that? That's like 3D or something. That? Yeah, isn't that wild? They like, actually we'll, we'll animated it to a vanishing point. See oh, look that? at that. It looks yeah, like 3D. Very similar to the Fleischer setback, isn't it? Except it's done with drawings. That's really interesting. God, that's wow. exciting. Yeah, you could watch that for a long time. That's really nice. Put it on a loop. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I'll, I'll turn it into a, a loop and I'll send it to you. That's you make really a awesome. gift out of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never That's seen fantastic. that before. That's wonderful. How how would you do that? Is it like different layers? No, it's all drawn on, on uh, well, if you'll notice the background, like the, the the clouds and the mountains don't change. The only thing that changes is the middle distance. You know, the roads and the buildings because they're animated towards a vanishing point. So it's, it's just a lot of hard work, you know, because each one of those buildings changes slightly. See how the background, the, the buildings in the background don't really change. They just pan slightly. Yeah. But they're drawn, too. They're just traced over and over again. Because they didn't have, you know, they didn't know much about cells in 1917. They hadn't really, really done much with the, with the process yet. So that's all created by hand, you know, like Windsor McKay did. Everything on paper. <laughs> Boy, these are absolutely phenomenal. 
till I get back. <laughs> yeah, this this part is really good. Office. That's a nice effect on what's going on behind the glass there. And this one is called Jeff's Toothache? Uh, laughing Gas, I believe. Oh, laughing Gas, okay, because there's also, a, uh, I think, one called Jeff's Toothache. You know, it's funny, like, I went to the dentist just the other day, and I asked her if she ever gives gas anymore. She says, oh, no, we never do. <laughs> <laughs> she never even, she had never even heard of sodium pentothal, which is, is laughing gas, you know. Wow. <laughs> I wonder when so, they discontinued that. I don't know. I guess now they're they're very confident in the, uh, you know, in, in what is the Novocaine that they give. Oh, you sent me a still from this. It don't hurt now. <laughs> it's funny, so many cartoons have this theme of laughing gas. Yeah. Including that Flip the Frog one. I've seen it on Flip, Willy Whopper, Betty Boop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Betty Boop did a whole thing with laughing gas. That's right. There's a Coco the Clown with laughing gas. Right. Yeah, the Betty Boop is actually kind of a remake of that Coco. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there's some of the nitrate hypo going. Trying not to laugh. <laughs> Some of these resemble modern, like, tune boom type of 2D animation, you know? Because so much of it is traced. Yeah. And there isn't a whole lot of squash and stretch yet. They hadn't learned how to make things look really smooth or graceful yet. The merry ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years 10 years <laughs> that's the power of laughing yes oh there's a second part oh, oh I've never seen that before that was know. probably just the, the tail leader. Yeah. Um, but how funny. Oh, so, there yeah, it is. No, I'm, I just rewinded it on this oh, one. Oh, I see. I thought, I thought for a minute you had me going there. I thought you were going to see a second part. <laughs> and here I'll give you a... Uh... Oh, and you know what? I think, because they also gave me cramps, but I think that's the same one. It's the same one I have? Yeah. Yeah, this famous old film pirate named Frank Wetzel uh, duped that. That was one of his, his few cartoon releases. Oh, look at that, the Honest Jockey. 
So this is an early one. Yeah, this is not one of the Dick Humors. This is one of the William Fox. Yeah, they they had uh, Mutt and Jeff for a long time. And the reason so few Fox Mutt and Jeffs exist is because of that horrible fire, you know, that destroyed millions of Fox films in, in New York, you know. I'm not exactly sure what date that nitrate fire occurred, but it it just about wiped out their entire history. So there's just a handful of, of uh, silent Fox films that exist. <laughs> that was a creative take on that beard. That was wild. <laughs> Beautiful inking on this. <laughs> Uh, crazy gags. <laughs> it's a wonderful world of drawings. You just go in and out of being absolutely flat into 3D space and back again. He's going back to his roots, derby yep. racing. Yes, exactly. Yeah, when uh, Mutt was a horse better. <laughs> He's playing the horse's ribs like a harp. Now there's an example of cell. There's a little bit of cell technology in there. On his arm, see? That's nice. I don't know who did that. Nice sketchy inking. They've invented steroids, it looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were having trouble with Jeff's size in that scene. He was a little bit too big. There's again something that's either done on cells or it's a cutout because they look opaque. That's nice. Yeah, these show in advance over the 1917s because they're using movement cycles more. Oi, Gewalt. <laughs> using using shots again steroid shots <laughs> they aren't trying to do anything too complicated perspective wise here it's all just sliding cells over a cycle. So they're letting the cameraman do the work here. 
unlike that wonderful scene we just saw where the whole background was animated in perspective. That was remarkable. Yeah, and that was like an early pre-20s. Like, yeah, that's what I'm wondering who worked on these. Yeah, somebody worked hard on that scene. Especially when you consider how quickly they had to do these things. Jeff wins. <laughs> that's a funny uh, use of uh, use of cycles like Jeff tries to walk away from her but he can't he feels sorry for her so he keeps he keeps coming back <laughs> well, I, I knew he was going to get beat up for that. <laughs> so, uh, that's wow, that, that's the first little batch I have. I still have plenty more, which is amazing. How many uh, uh, button jumps do they have? Um, let me count. <clears throat> I think it was around like, oh, here it is. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen. Wow. Well, it's very encouraging that there's so many that are, you know, the Mutt and Jeff Film Corporation ones and the and the William Fox ones and things like yeah. that. Those are so rare. They just never turn up. I guess in the heyday of 16 millimeter film duping, nobody had those. Nobody had any uh, 35 millimeter prints. Mm -hmm. So they just never got duped. So I guess Frank Wetzel must have gotten a hold of a nitrate print of cramps. That's why he, he made that. Oh, look. Is that my print or their print? Yeah, this is the print that we, your print that we scanned. Oh, very good. This is just raw, you know, no, nothing cleaned up. Yeah, if you ever want to do that print of Where Am I, let me know. Yeah, of course. I, I didn't even... I have no idea uh, what kind of shape it's in. I totally overlooked that one. I haven't seen one. it in years. But I think it's very much like this one. But, um, I'll leave it here, Mark. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll work on some more, and I'll probably, if you're free tomorrow... We could look at some more, or if you know, next time you're I'd available. Love to. But I have plenty more, and it's a nice mix of the early ones. Uh, I think I have maybe one more Fox one, and then the rest are kind of the later, like twenty six, exactly. Yeah. And those are really cool. Um, yeah, they're all interesting. They really are. But so, wow, thanks so much for showing me those uh, those early ones. I really enjoyed those. Yeah, I'll have more for you. I'm, I'm glad you like these. I, I like showing you stuff you, you haven't seen. So. Oh, yeah. Um, well, heck. I don't, I don't think there's too many people anywhere who've seen these. I wonder if even Mike Barrier has seen them. So hopefully we can start the, the Mutt and Jeff craze again. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be the day, but uh, it might be worth trying. But, uh, but yeah, thank you again, Mark. I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Always a pleasure talking to you, so I appreciate it. Okay, that. have a good night, Mauricio. Thanks again. Thank you, Mark. Okay, bye for now.